So that strange looking card in your new deck, what's it all about? Well, you're about to learn the most streamlined and convincing empty box routine. There's minimal handling for this. You can use sleight of hand as well as routine and techniques to make this a complete miracle. So I tried over a hundred versions of this card just to get it perfect, uh, both in terms of performance angles, but as well as a realistic look. So the moment you display the box as being empty is done on an offbeat. So your spectators are disarmed. The trick hasn't started yet. So if done casually, this will fly by them every time. We've even worked it so you end completely clean. You can hand the deck and the box out for inspection immediately. One thing you might like to consider when doing this trick is lighting. So you really want to make sure that your light source is coming from the right side. So for, for here you can see my light source is on the left. So kind of, you need to basically have a think about your surroundings and try and match up your shadows. Let's get into how to set the gaff up. We're going to get into how to set up your gaff card. So we're going to take this card and we're going to make something like this. So it's basically flat, but it's going to go in the box and it's going to cover. So it's really easy to make. All you're going to do is one cut with scissors and then you do a couple of score lines and then you're pretty much ready to go. All you're going to need is a ruler, a craft knife and some scissors. So let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to cut this seal. So we're going to cut it right along this line here and we want a nice clean straight cut. So you're going to take a craft knife or a scalpel or whatever sharp instrument you have. You're going to push it in and then you're going to give, I usually do a little first upstroke and then you're just going to cut along there very carefully and you want to try and get that as level as you can. So that's the first thing you're going to need to do is get that nice and straight there. So something like that. So we're done with the craft knife now, so that can go away. And the next thing you're going to want to do is take out the cards, and then you're going to find the box gaff. You can put the cards to the side for a minute. So we've just cut the seal, so the next thing you're going to do is cut along this dotted line. So you're going to take your scissors and you don't want any red showing, so you're going to cut inside of that red line. You're just going to very carefully, and you want this a nice smooth round edge. So you're just going to take your time over this. Try and do it in nice smooth cuts. And just follow the inside of that red line all the way around, like so. Okay, so you can get rid of this bit. So next, we're going to go into how to score the card, because we're going to make a flap like this. And now we're going to get into scoring. So, really important part is not to go past this line. I'll show you with a ruler here. So, this is really important for the illusion. Is not so that's where you want the score mark to end. I don't know if you can see, this, this point here is all in view, so incorrectly would be something like this. So that is correct, that's where you want your score line, just there. So I've marked them roughly here for you, so this is 49 millimetres up to this point, and then it's 67 millimetres up to this point. So these are where the score lines are going to run, but we're going to do it on the back side. So you're going to get something with a hard surface. Actually, let's just mark the, mark the points first. So we're going to have a look here. We're going to find 49 millimetres on the ruler. And then we're just going to put a little pencil mark this side. So that's 49. You're going to come over this side, make sure everything's square. And then you're going to put a, a little pencil mark exactly on 49 millimetres. So we've got two marks on 49, and then we're going to find 67, which is there. So you're going to mark 67 millimetres this side, and you're going to come over and do exactly the same this side. So 67 is there. 
So there, your four marks, and we're going to join these up, and then we're going to score along those lines. So what you want to do is find a kind of nice hard surface, and then you're going to take a blunt instrument, so the back of scissors is pretty good, or a ballpoint pen that has run out of ink works pretty good also. So what we're going to do is we're going to match up our first lines, like so. And you're going to take whatever kind of blunt instrument and you're going to run it across softly maybe four or five times. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, and one for luck, there's five. Okay, so that's our first score mark. And we're going to put the bend in, so you're going to hold the ruler down and you're just going to start to leave, lever that up slightly. Now this is important because you don't want any crack marks really, so this might happen but there's a way to fix it, but you want to try and do this gently as you can so as not to kind of crack the card. So you can see we've just gotten that and we're going to bend it this way very slightly. I'm going to turn over and here's, here's what I'm talking about here, so we don't really want this paper to crack and tear, so we're going to be very gentle to begin with. And I'm going to flip it over this side a little bit. And you just continue to work it without tearing the card or making it crack. And you can square this up a little bit more. So that's a successful score and mark and bend. You can see we haven't really torn the surface of the card. It's nice and bendy and flexible but we haven't caused that this top surface to crack. It doesn't matter so much if it does on the back because you're not going to see this, but this can really break the illusion if you get a nasty kind of tear mark on here. So that's the first, the first score and bend you're going to do. Now you're going to do the second one. So again, you're just going to match up those pencil marks we made earlier. About there. And you're just going to run exactly the same, so five light times. So one, two, three, four, and five. You're going to do exactly the same. So you're going to put the ruler here, and we're just going to start to lever this up. So like that. And this is the most important one because if it cracks on the black then it's not going to look all that good. Um, but like I say, there is a way to fix it if it does happen. So you're just going to gently fold and try and do this without it cracking. So we will see on this side. So there you go. So that's basically how to make your gaff. You're going to want these lines to be fairly kind of sharp in order to fit into the box. And you can see this is this is cracked a little bit. So this isn't the end of the world because you can take a, a soft pencil, like a really soft B, and then you can you can just fill these in should you need to. But the idea is to try and get, keep these lines as clean as you can. So now we've made the gaff, the next thing is to test it out. So it's going to go in the back here. And then we're going to just slot that in there and that should fit perfectly. There you go. So there you go. And then that's kind of the illusion you're going to get. So you're going to get the empty box illusion just with that one card. Next you're going to want to prepare your box and this is pretty easy. You're just going to cut cut both the, the tabs off here. Now it's quite important where you do cut them because if you cut them too high then you're going to get sort of a nasty shadow 
that comes over when you're trying to do the illusion. If you cut them too, too low, then you're going to see, see the edges and it's going to increase the gap. So you, you want to cut it, if you can see the score mark on there, you're going to cut it just above the score mark. So I'll show you exactly where that is. So you're going to come in and then you're going to cut just on the left side of the score mark. There. So that's kind of where you want to cut. So it's fairly even to everything else. And then you're going to do the other side. It's probably easier from this way. So just the left side of the score mark. And there. And you can get rid of the bits there. So that's how to prepare your box. Your seal should be nice and kind of flush to there. These are nice and flush and straight. And now, when you put the deck in, the flap goes in at the back. That goes between the cards and the seal. And then because we've got this sticky bit on the seal, you just give it a little press, and there you go. Firstly, let's have a little talk about the seal. So the reason we cut it along here is so that it hides, so if we, if we didn't have the seal, we would have the, the kind of semicircle of the box and that would show the gaff and that would kind of ruin the illusion. So we've included a, a seal with this deck for this particular purpose. So we've already gone through how to cut it, uh, but from this angle, you can see, so from there, the box illusion looks pretty good, right? And this is because the seal is, is keeping this all together. So watch what happen if the seal comes apart and you start to see this the white line along along the black. And that's it's okay if you keep it in motion, but for a really clean look, this seal needs to be pressed down so everything's kind of locked together. That's really, really important. And then yeah, once once you want to kind of get it get it unstuck, you just apply pressure between these fingers and it'll just unstick, allowing you to then put the flap back in. So yeah, that's the first really important part is the seal. So after using this, this for a while, the seal might lose some of its stickiness. So what you can do is just add a little bit of double-sided stick tape in there and just get it so it's kind of just tacky, not too sticky. You can just apply it just where that seal is, just to keep your sticky going, okay? Sticky, sticky. Just discuss the seal and why, it's, why that's sticky to keep everything tight. So if you have this, the illusion is going to be broken, so it must be stuck down. Same goes for the corners, everything must be tight. So you can see from this angle, the box looks great. The illusion is made, the, deck seems em the box seems empty when in fact there is a deck inside. So performance angles, you're going to think about a couple of things. So the, the pitch is very important, as as well the angle, okay? So when you hold this, hold this here, you, what you want to imagine is that the, you're running a line from this corner right the way through to this corner to your spectator's viewpoint. So that's kind of the angle you want. And you're going to want to tip the box down just a fraction. So that should look good from there, right? And this enables you to both shake the box upside down by pinching here, so you can shake it, and then you can come up and show the spectator as long as you remember those two things, is to line those angles up and then just tip down a fraction. So it should be there. So this enables you to really fairly show, show the deck as being empty. You can then show your spectator for a split second before you then come over and do the reel, which we'll get into in a second. But that's the first, first angle to think about. Run a line from there to your spectator's point, viewpoint and then just tip the deck down very fractionally and you should get perfect illusion. So that's the first angle. This is the second angle I like to use and it's more in a kind of natural kind of vertically sort of hold, resting holding position. So it's a very natural position and this is so you can then open the box and display it to be empty to your spectator. Um, unlike the first angle where you kind of got a, a visual aid in terms of the box like this, this one's a little kind of trickier to get. Um, it means you need to practice in the mirror really, just to try and find that sweet spot. So you can see here, 
it's not very good, but the minute I kind of start to point up a little bit, then it becomes nice. So with this one, you just need to have a little play in the mirror and, and kind of, um, once you find the angle, you need to kind of program your actions so that you can do this every time without thinking, you open the box and show the spectator. So I can do that every time now because I just know the rough angles that I need to show the spectator. But just have a little practice in the mirror and you'll get it perfect. When performing, there are a couple of things that you might like to consider. So the first is the shine. So we've just lit it a little bit lighter here so you can see, but hopefully you can see that the shine kind of kills the illusion. So if you get a shine, shine across here, it's going to show that this is a flat surface and that things are not kind of what they seem. So first consideration is shine. So always try and be slightly away from a light source. Don't have a light source directly bouncing off the face of this. The next thing you might like to consider when performing is your light source. So if you have a look here, we've got a lot of shadowing on this side. So that means that the light source is going to be coming from the, the right side in order for this to, to make sense. So when you're performing, just kind of have a feel and, and see where your, your main light source is coming from. And then you want to position yourself so the light source is on your right. There are three main ways I like to show the deck appearing from an empty box. So the first is more casual, just as you would open a normal deck of cards. And then the second two are based around the same kind of technique, but just done slightly differently. And that is so you can really kind of produce the deck in quite a startling way. So let's get into that now. Here's the first way to materialize the deck from a seemingly empty box. So this is kind of the casual, casual kind of way I would usually open a, a deck of cards. So if I was to open this realistically, I'd come over, I'd open the flap, and then I'd, I'd pour out the cards. So this is kind of the actions we're trying to mimic. So I'll run through what that looks like first, and then we'll get into kind of an explanation. So also we'll, we'll get into how to get to this position in a minute. So let's just say we've shown the deck empty, we've done a magical moment, I'm going to shake, ah, oh, can you hear the box? Ah oh, yeah, the deck is in there, and then it comes out like this. And then what we've done is we've stolen that gaff underneath. So then the deck can go out for inspection, you can re-grip, cop that, cop that card out, and hand the deck out for inspection as well. So let's, let's show how to do that. So everything's inside, the flap has gone inside the seal as well. So the reason I shake is this shake does a couple of things. Firstly, it sells the fact that the deck has now entered the box, so you can hear that. But the main reason I shake is so this part just comes off a fraction, so if, I'll exaggerate it there. So this is what you're looking for, is, to, is kind of to catch a break between both flaps here. So by, by shaking, and holding down fractionally, you can see this starts to come away. So what I'm gonna do now, you can see the tuck flap and you can see the gaff flap as well. So your first finger of your left hand is gonna to wanna to go in and pull all of that out as one. So I'm exposing it there, but just so you can see. So you're gonna shake, it's gonna come apart fractionally First finger is going to come in, and then the thumb is going to come up and meet the first finger just to hide anything. And then as you open with the thumb, this first finger is going to cover this edge here. So from there it looks totally fair. Uh, but if I remove my finger, maybe not so fair. So the thumb is going to come over, the finger is going to ride along that line. Now what you're going to do is this thumb is going to pull this card fractionally this way. So it's pulling the gaff card just so it passes the flap here. And this is so that it will come along for the ride. So I pull out when the deck comes and then your fingers underneath can grasp the gaff and that's all going to come out as one. You can then show the box, hand that out for inspection. You can then grip the cards, take the gaff into cop, 
as you then hand the deck out for inspection and you can pocket, pocket this at this stage because this is a big off beat now. So that's, that's the first way, it's kind of like, I call it like the, the casual open because it's just kind of as you would open the box any time you would. So you're going to do your magic moment, you're going to snap, that's going to come apart a fraction, your first finger is going to come in, thumb is going to come up, it's going to open, first finger is going to shield, you're going to pull back a fraction as everything comes out and your fingers take that gaff out for the ride. After you've shown the box to be empty to your spectators, you're going to want to close this, but you're going to want to do it in a kind of way which hides the gaff. So let me just show you what I mean. So if I've just if I've just displayed this to a spectator, I immediately want to close that so they don't catch a catch a glimpse of the gaff. So if I was to display, show, and then hang around for too long. They're going to see this. Also, if you close this from the side and they see that, that's not going to be good either. So, this is quite important just to selling the last part of the illusion is when you've, when you've shown the box, this is how to do from here. Immediately, you're going to push the flap up as you, you lever the deck down, and then you're going to squeeze, and then the flap is going to go in. So, the reason we squeeze here is so we've got this nice and stuck to make the illusion look good but we need to get the flap in here. So we display, we're going to shut that flap up, we're going to lever the deck down, we're going to re-grip, we're going to squeeze so it comes apart, and then we're going to insert the flap. So if you're doing it from the side, so we display the box as being empty to a spectator. Again, you don't want to just shut the box from here because they're, they're going to see this. What you want to do is exactly the same. You're going to turn it, away from your spectator, you're going to squeeze and then you're going to push the flap in. So this is all kind of hidden to the spectator that, that way. So it's just, it's just a small point but it's, it's quite important that you don't kind of ruin that illusion. After you've done the hard work of displaying the box empty, then if you, if you come up around this, you know, you're going to see all this and it's going to look nasty. So display it, shut it up quickly, squeeze and then the flap goes in. It's that simple. This is my favourite way to produce the deck from the empty box and it's because it's quite a kind of impactful, startling kind of moment. So this is kind of how I perform it. So I kind of show, show the deck to be empty, i have show that to the spectator, that kind of come and re-grip. And remember your angles, you, you've got quite a nice little bit of movement here so you can come down and you can just rest and be casual. As long as this is pointed down a fraction and you line that angle up, you're good. So you can be really nice and casual here. And also a little point is, I like to give this a little wiggle as I'm kind of going up and down. This is to make the deck kind of feel empty, because there is a deck of cards in there, so it kind of is quite heavy. But if there wasn't a deck in there, it would be really, really light. So this is kind of the, the light, empty feel you're trying to achieve, and that's kind of, you can give it a little wiggle. Uh, let's have a look. So to produce the deck, you've just shown it to be empty, and for all intents and purposes, they believe that this box is empty when in fact there's a deck inside. Now to produce, produce the, the deck, all you're going to do is just on a, a downstroke, you're going to stop like this and the deck is going to come out. And because the gaff is behind, the gaff comes out automatically. Let me just turn this over and you'll see. And the gaff comes out here. Now if the gaff passes a little bit here, your fingers can your fingers can cover, and but if you just relax your hand open, these cards come down and they will cover the gaff automatically. So you don't really have to worry about the gaff being seen with this production either. So this is why it's very very good. It kind of does everything all in one very easy action. So you haven't got to come over and open. All you have to do is literally one, two, and then the deck will come out. So that's my favourite way. Uh, to do it, and there's another version of that where you actually close the deck. So, for instance, let's get into it again. We've we've just done the, the reveal. We're showing the spectators the box to be empty, and then we're going to come over, open, and then we're going to we're going to put the, the the tuck in there. So it's completely completely sealed now. 
and you can just do exactly the same motion. You can do whatever, whatever magic moment you want to, to let them start to think that the deck might be in there. You can give a little shake again, like the first one, and this is just to loosen everything up here a little bit. And then you just do exactly the same. You're just going to go one, two, and then on the down straight, you're going to put some force in, and the deck will come out. And the same as before, the gaff will ride underneath. And then, yeah, you can hand the box out for inspection, cop out that car, hand the deck out for inspection, and you're completely clean. Next, I'm going to show you a technique how to load the gaff in order to vanish the deck. So the setup is just the gaff flush with the deck, and that all goes inside the box. And then the flap is just shut inside the seal. And you can start with this in your jacket pocket, so when you're ready to perform, you can bring the deck out. You're going to open the, the flap, and then the finger's going to come in the back just to make sure that the gaff rides out as well. So your first finger's here, you're then going to turn up the box, and then you're just going to take the deck out as you would usually. So the gaff's come along for the ride, that's underneath. I can then hand the box out for the inspection, say, hey, you check that out, and then for another spectator, I'm going to come over, and then I'm going to cop this bottom card out. So that gaff is going to get copped as I then hand the deck out for inspection. So the, the gaff card is in cop this way around. Because this card's a little bit shorter, it makes it very easy to cop, not much sticking out. This hand is going to drop to your side, all their attention is on here, there's no suspicion on this hand, so as long as you're natural with this hand, it should be fine. So next we're going to load this underneath the deck again. So we're going to take the deck back from the spectator, that's going to go into your hand, and that's just going to get loaded underneath. And there's a particular grip here, so you're going to want to grip between your middle finger and your thumb at the top of the deck. And then your third finger is going to kind of go behind. And that's going to help in a minute when we put the deck in, it's going to help just separate that gaff. So it's going to use kind of like a, a little sliding mechanism just to, just to take that slightly away from the deck to make the next part easier. So that's the grip between the middle and thumb, third finger. You're then going to take the box back, and obviously you can do it around this way, but I'm just going to do it to show you. So you're just going to put in as you usually would, and just let it all drop, and just with the third finger there, it's just going to help bring this up a fraction away from the cards. So then you can push the flap up, and then you can grip everything as one. So the cards are going to go in. And then what you're going to do is turn away from the spectator to do this bit, but I'm going to show you in an exposed view. So the third finger has helped keep that up. I'm going to then join it with the, the box flap. Very important if you're shown at any point is to keep this first finger covering this line, and then the illusion is good. So from here, we're going to turn away, but I'm not. I'm going to show you the exposed view. And as you turn away, you're just going to pull this up a fraction, just so it clears the box. So it makes it easier for your thumb to pick this part up and not both parts. So if this is lower, when you come to then push this flap in, it's going to be very difficult. So this just needs to be just a couple of millimetres higher in the other one. So as we're turning away from the spectator, immediately I'm going to catch that edge of the gaff. I'm, and I'm going to bring everything over. This is an important part here. This part needs to stay together. So a bit of pressure with this finger and your third finger. So it's going to kind of do this action. So you're going to keep it all together. Thumb and first finger are just going to press a little bit just to clear space. And this is what's going to happen. You're going to come over and the gaff is going to get inserted with the help of your thumb here. So the gaff gets inserted and then you're going to Regrip here and it's going to get pressed down. So, for this, you don't want to insert the flap, you only want to insert the gaff here because, in a minute, this makes it easier to do your kind of reveal. So, I'll run through that one more time. Uh, so, we've handed the deck out, we've copped the card, we've retaken the deck, we're going to load the cop card underneath, we're going to regrip. Remembering that third finger behind, we're going to come over, it's going to let everything in, we're going to make sure that the gaff doesn't slide all the way down. 
So we're here, and then we're going to lever the box up to the gaff, and then we're going to pull this gaff up, and this is all done as we're turning away. So we're going to lever that gaff up just a fraction past the box. The thumb is going to be able to, to take this, so we're going to take it here. This is all going to come over, we're going to squeeze, that's going to go in as we shut down. That's basically how to load the gaff. So we'll go through a couple of slow motion run throughs just so you can see the exact handling. Here's how to perform this illusion in its most basic form. So this is always going to look like you're going to take out a deck of cards, you're going to open the lid, you're going to show that it's empty, you're then going to close the lid, snap, and then you're going to produce a deck of cards from an empty box. Here's the most basic way to perform this, and this is kind of like the simplest way, minimal moves, this is just the kind of core structure of this. So what you're going to do, you're going to show an empty box to a spectator, you're going to close the lid, you're going to do your magical moment, you're going to shake, and then, and then a deck is going to be produced from an empty box. So it should look something like this. So we're going to take a deck, we're going to open it, we're going to show it to be empty, we're going to show the spectators, so the box is empty, we're going to come over, snap, and then the deck is going to get produced from an empty box. Here's how to do that. You're going to start with the deck inside the box and the gaff is going to be between all the cards and the sticky bit and that's going to get pushed in and then you're going to press down to make sure that's stuck nicely. And we're going to start with the flap open, so in a minute we're going to open it this way to make it look like we're opening it from inside the box, but we need this to be stuck nicely for the, the display. So I start this way, that's in my pocket. When I'm ready, I'm going to come out, I'm going to show the deck, and you can re-grip this any way you like. And these lines also help kind of sell the fact that the, the tuck is kind of open. So you can see if you put your thumb across here, the kind of lines blend in. But I just I usually just grip it between my thumb and middle finger, and I can I can grip around and re-switch like this. Show the box, and then when you're ready, you're just going to snap this up like this. So you can even come in and you can kind of look like you're digging around for it and just open it this way. But a key point, when I bring this out, the first thing I do is I just give it another squeeze here. This is really, really important because you don't want this, you don't want the, the gaff to come away from the, the seal because it, it just crushes the illusion. So as I bring this out, I'm just giving it an extra squeeze just before I start. So you're going to grip the box in your right hand here like this, with so your fingers along this side and your thumb along this side. You're then going to snap to show it's open, and because you've pressed, now you can come around you can show the box to be empty to your spectator. And from here I like to just re-grip it from here. So for instance, I've just opened, I've shown it to be empty, show the spectator, and then I just come down and all my attention goes up. I look at the spectator in the eyes. I'm not even paying this any attention. They've just seen an empty box. I'm holding the box here. If they then re-look again, they're gonna see that it's empty. But I'm just talking to them. So you see the box is empty, we're gonna do something really crazy. So this is what you're gonna do. You're then gonna come out, re-grip with your fingers behind, uh, thumb behind, fingers in front. You can give it one last shake. And then what we're gonna do is that production I showed you earlier. So we haven't even closed the box. They can see it's empty and then we're gonna produce a deck from the empty box. Again, you can hand this out for inspection. You can come over, cop that card as you hand the deck out for inspection. So that's just it in its basic form, how to produce the deck from the box.
now we're going to take everything you've just learned and put that together into a nice little routine. So this is how it looks. I'm just going to run through this quickly for you. So you're going to take the box and you're going to have two spectators, one on your right, one on your left. This is spectator number one, spectator number two. So here's how it goes. You're going to open the box and you're going to take everything out. You hand the box out to spectator number one to inspect. As you're doing that, you're then going to hand the deck out for inspection as well. This card has gone into cop. Then you're going to take the deck back, regrip, take the box back, and then insert everything in there. Then you're going to come over, and then you're going to close everything up. You're going to pause a sec, let the drama build before you snap in your magical moment. And then you can open the box to reveal that the deck has indeed disappeared. Shake a second, just snap one more time, and then the box should jump back into real life. You can then hand this box out for inspection, and then hand the deck out for inspection, and then that can get put into your pocket as there. Is. So there is the box gaff. We've shown you how to construct it, uh, how to get in, how to get out, and a few ways to display the kind of piece of magic. Um, another thing I've been playing around with is kind of a fake load, unload. So you've got a duplicate deck, and there's a deck inside with the gaff. So I've been playing around with how to unload this, so you can hold it in a deep grip here, and come straight over, open, empty, hand that out to someone, show the box to be empty, close the box up, place that down or in another spectator's hands. You can then move on with any kind of routine and finish with a deck vanish. So if you use a top it, or there's plenty of routines out there that kind of set you up for an offbeat so you can ditch all that kind of stuff. So you go through your routine, you vanish the deck, you come back and you say, look, watch, and then it's going to appear back in the box. So that's just one idea to play around with. We're going to be releasing more effects using the box and the queen gaff and the grinders and all that stuff. So if you sign up to our workshop, we'll send you an email when there's new material ready. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much.